Okay, in this video, what we're going to do is pick up from our last video, and we're going to talk about the range slider. So okay. I still have the animation visible in my view panel. You can see I can drag my time slider back and forth, and everything moves. Now, the range slider. That's this guy down here. And this guy is extremely important, and beginners like to overlook it. Oh, yeah. Why is it important? Because we get to tell Maya this is the range of animation we're interested in right now. How much animation does any particular scene have? That's up to you. Can you change that while you're working on the scene? Let's say you decide to make your animation longer or shorter. Of course you can. Beginners in the world of Maya seem to get kind of confused thinking that if they start out with a scene and they say, ah, we're going to have 60 frames, that later if they need to change that, they can't. Or if they need to shorten it, that they're going to cause problems with their animation. Right. That's not true. Basically, in the end, it all comes down to what you've got set up on your range slider. Furthermore, I've seen a lot of especially beginners get into the habit of, let's say they're making an animation with 120 frames, but they're really trying to work hard on maybe the fir only the first 15 frames. Mm -hmm. They're trying to get that just right. They'll leave their timeline or their, their range slider set to all 120 instead of just focusing in on what they need to see. That's right. Matter of fact, I have a good example about that that I used to give, which was a character brushing their teeth. Sure. Watch this. First of all, let's take a look at the boxes, and then we'll talk about my example because it will make more sense. The outer boxes, so outer box here, outer box over here, this controls the entire length of your animation. Okay. Right now, I have an animation that's 48 frames long. The inner boxes control the animation that we're currently looking at in our viewport. So if we were to hit play, we're going to play from frame 1 through frame 24. You'll notice that the range slider itself right now allows us to go from frame 1 to whatever we've got capped right now, which is frame 24, but I can slide this back and forth. So now look at this. I'm looking at 25 to 48, and check out how my box is updated automatically. Pretty neat. So you've got a 24-frame range that you're sliding back and forth in the realm of one uh, frame 1 to 48. Precisely. Now here's what Zach was talking about a second ago. I'm going to click this button right here, and watch this. I can drag that. How cool is that? Now I'm looking at the entire range of the animation, and let's say that your character is only working on a very small spot. Let's say from frame 12 to 24, but he hits play, and he watches all of the animation playback right. every time. At this point, it's very easy to lose focus on the part that you, you're working closely with. Mm -hmm. So in a case like this, you may want to simply click and drag and go frame 12, click and drag, to frame 24, and now you're looking at just that specific part of the animation. Only what you need to see. That's right. So if I wanted my animation to be from frame 1 to frame 200, I can simply come over here and type in 200. I hit enter. You'll notice that my range slider updates accordingly to reflect exactly where it is along this entire range of animation. But notice the timeline itself did not change. No, it did not because, again, it's respecting how we have the range slider currently set up. Right. So I can move this, and as I drag it, you'll notice that it's changing my time slider up here, click and drag, or I can set these up myself by typing the numbers in. Very, very handy. I like to think of it as kind of a way to zoom in and out of your timeline. Yeah, absolutely. Brushing teeth example. Okay. You've got a scene where your character wakes up in the morning, he smacks his alarm clock, gets out of bed, yawn, stands up. Scratches his backside for a second, <laughs> looks around, walks over to the bathroom. So far, it sounds just like me, except I smack my alarm a lot more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Walks over to the bathroom, looks in the mirror, grabs his toothbrush, toothpaste, runs the water, begins brushing teeth. Now you're working on the brushing teeth part. You've got everything else in place. Your scene is playing back a little bit slow because it's kind of heavy. Sure. Do you really want to hit play and play back through him waking up, smacking the alarm clock, getting out of bed? What? No. No. You're focusing on the character brushing his teeth. What do we do? Well, let's say that's between frame 60 and 80. We simply come over here and say, I want to look at frame 60 to frame 80. And now that is all I'm looking at in my timeline here. I can simply click and drag through that portion, hit play, and let it keep looping through so that I can study exactly how the character's motion with a toothbrush back and forth across his teeth, look. Sure, and just to reiterate, when you hit your rewind to the beginning button like we were clicking on earlier, that's just going to take you to the beginning of this new range. That's right. So in this case, you're only rewinding to the point where he starts brushing his teeth, not to the beginning of the entire animation. That's correct. And also, same thing applies for fast-forwarding as well. Only fast-forwarding to the end of the range that's visible. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and set this whole thing back up. 
So let's say maybe back down to 60 frames. Check this out, too, how this has got 80 as the end of my range right now. Yeah. This is kind of helpful. I want to set it back to 48. I'll simply type 48, hit Enter, and since this number is going to become less than what my ending range was set to, my ending range can never be greater than the end of the animation itself, so it automatically adjusts for you. Very cool. So it's just very handy. Another, another I guess you could say, little tip mm -hmm. is if you want to... Make your animation longer. Like, let's say I want it to be 100 frames, and I also want my range slider to jump to that 100 frames. Sure. Change this number here, 100, enter. And again, this number can never be greater than the end of the animation, so the end of the animation updates automatically. So it bumps everything up. Absolutely. So it's just a, it's a very handy, quick tip, if you will. Cool. So that's the range slider. Very briefly, moving on over this way, we've got a button right here, and we've got this little field right here <laughs> that says no character set. Characters. Yes, you can create characters inside of Maya. I'm going to switch over to animation, and you have this character thing up here, and it says create character set. Yeah, I've seen so, so, so many people that are new to the world of Maya, and their mind seems to just dump the word set, and they see create character. Right. Then they hit it, and they're like, where's my character? <laughs> I, want a, I want a dude with some arms yeah. and fingers and legs, and, but there's no character. Character sets are special containers that contain attributes. We're going to be talking about this a little bit later on. As a matter of fact, in this fundamentals course, you guys will be creating your own character sets, and you will see the power of them. But this is where you can see what character set is active, and this is where you can switch between the character sets you've created. Currently, there are no character sets. None is the default. There you go. Cool. We'll come back to character sets more a little later. Moving on from there, we have the auto key button. Mm -hmm. This is where we can toggle auto keyframe on and off. We'll get into this a bit more later on when we're doing animation, but what it allows you to do is skip the process of having to hit S to drop keyframes on everything that's visible over here. Instead, it will automate automatically keyframe whichever attribute value changes as long as that attribute value has an initial keyframe on the time slider. Gotcha. We'll um, talk more about how that works a little bit later. Sure. Moving on from there, we have our Animation Preferences um, button, which really is just our Preferences dialog, period. But It's going to be the Preferences for all of Maya. That's right. We're just set automatically to the Timeline section. Sure. And because of that, they can kind of get away with saying, this is your Animation <laughs> Preferences. Woo. Right. And with that, that's really going to wrap it up for the Range Slider. So now with an understanding of how the Time Slider works and the Range Slider, you should have a, a pretty good idea of how all these buttons down here work and how they work together. Yeah, even if you're not to the point where you can uh, readily create keyframes and make animation in your viewport, it would be a good idea to practice just moving your time slider and your range slider around to get used to how they work. Absolutely. And with that, that's going to wrap up this lesson. Thanks a lot, everyone.